Hi, this is Sonny Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Marco Paladino, CTO and co-founder of Kong. Marco, first of all, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me here. What exactly is Kong Connect? Kong Connect is a new product that we have built at Kong. Uh, and it's a cloud-native connectivity platform that's being hosted as a service. And it can take care of all the connectivity use case across any environment, across both virtual machines and Kubernetes for gateway and mesh, north-south, east-west traffic. Can you talk about the importance of Kong Connect for developers, you know, architects, and operators? You know, because I think you're covering all three there. Basically, the more applications we create and the more services we create, and the more connectivity we create to connect all of the services together. And it's inevitable. Because connectivity is the backbone of any modern architecture. If connectivity is down, the applications are down. So up until now, uh, the application teams usually were building the applications, they were building the services, and as part of their work, they were also building uh, connectivity management. And so they were securing those connections, they were observing those connections, they were exposing those connections. But because the application teams are doing it in their own programming language in different applications, this over time also creates lots of fragmentation. And we create fragmentation in how we manage connectivity, either at the edge or across different applications or within an application with service mesh, for example. When we create any fragmentation in the connectivity layer, we create unreliability in, in, in how that connectivity is being managed. Um, and, and so one of the most important things that any organization can do is to abstract away that connectivity so that the application teams are not the builders of that connectivity, but they become consumers of connectivity. And, uh, and in order to do that, connectivity really has to go back into the hands of the architects that are provisioning the underlying infrastructure for every application. And so with Kong Connect, we have created a, a connectivity platform as a service that effectively abstracts away connectivity the same way we would be using Kubernetes, for example, to abstract away our data center operations. And we can provision connectivity either at the edge, in a service mesh for north-south and east-west traffic using different runtimes, different data planes. Uh, we can provision that connectivity across every application and every service that the teams are building. And, and by doing so, we improve the efficiency of the application teams themselves because they do not have to build that anymore. They can focus on their goal, which is building the, the, the products, the users, the customers. And at the same time, we allow the architects to remove that connectivity concern, have, have it secure and observable and exposable by default, thanks to ConConnect, so that they can focus on their transformations that they're they are, you know, onboarding within the organization. So really it's a win-win for the architects and for the application teams. And can you also talk about how they can access ConConnect? ConConnect is uh, fundamentally um, a control plane in the cloud. So by accessing the platform in the cloud, the architect can decide if they want connectivity at the edge, perhaps via an API gateway. They want to enable a service mesh with an Envoy-based uh, Sidecar proxy. Or maybe they want to create a, a service hub, a service discovery uh, catalog where developers inside and outside of the organization can explore in order to determine what APIs are available and how to consume them. So regardless of what the connectivity use case is, you know, ConConnect, it's full life cycle. So it's not just about connecting services together. It's also about creating them and documenting them. Regardless of, of what use case they're trying to fix, they can go into Connect, follow a wizard, decide to, to deploy a data plane locally in their own infrastructure, either for gateway or for service mesh, and this data plane in a secure way will then connect to the connect uh, to the ConConnect control plane. And all the functionalities for zero trust security, for observability, for API management, for, you know, for pretty much anything really, uh, are going to be configured from the control plane and then automatically synchronized across all the data planes that are running on either Kubernetes environments or virtual machine environments, as well as multi-cloud or hybrid environments. Now, what is interesting is that in today's world, when everybody talks about platform, Kong Connect, you're trying to position it as an unplatform. What does that mean? So with Kong Connect, uh, really, we want to make sure that the, the user 
it is going to be able to run a data plane as close as possible to the services that they're running. And so by separating and providing this hybrid functionality, uh, the, the, the platform really provides that control plane that allows us to manage the data planes. But then when we look at the when we look at the live traffic, the runtime traffic, all of that can still flow within the organization's infrastructure. And, and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, because the traffic may be too sensitive to expose somewhere else, may be too sensitive to, to, to process in places other than the environments where the organization is deploying their software. And so uh, we call it unplatform for a couple of reasons. It's unplatform because really uh, it still supports distributed data planes that can be deployed on gateway and service meshes, as well as ingress controllers pretty much everywhere locally on the, on the infrastructure of the organization, as well as it allows us to provide an experience that can be gradual for any user of ConConnect. So they can start by deploying the gateways uh, and, and, the, and the service mesh uh, data plane proxies. But then over time, little by little, they can onboard on other functionality that the platform provides. Like for example, the service hub, which allows to document and describe all services that are available in the organization, as well as our security and machine learning products and so on and so forth. So the experience can be gradual. Uh, the usage of the platform can be at the users, uh, can go at, you know, can follow the user's pace of adoption and the data planes themselves, uh, the proxies can be deployed in a distributed way across the entire organization. Because of all of this, we call it the unplatform because it's not true that everything has to run in the cloud. It is up to the user to decide how much of our functionality they want to use and how much of that functionality can be deployed uh, in, in their own clusters as opposed to running in the cloud with ConConnect. Can you also talk about uh, some of the capabilities of new capabilities of Service Hub uh, and what is the importance for the ecosystem? When we create services, um, we usually speak about this problem from a technology standpoint. You know, we want to create services. How do we connect them? How do we secure them? How do we expose them? But there is also a human component, and that is how do we discover the services that the human developers are going to be assembling together to create new applications or to create new services? And so there is a human aspect of discovering the services, reading their documentation, getting up to speed with these services that may have been created by another line of business or another team, or perhaps belonging to another application. And so the service hub really is the source of truth of all the services that are running within the organization. And so any service that we have, and when I say service, it's not just an HTTP API, but can be anything, can be a service that can be a database, for example, any L4 to L7 service, um, HTTP, but also databases, but also Kafka, but also Redis, can be literally anything that we can consume. It is going to be part of the service hub so that we can dis explore what services are available. We can onboard on these services. We can then request access to the services. And from the hub, we can also then determine who has built the services so that we can work with the teams that have built those services to start, you know, to ask questions on how to implement those services in the first place. So the service hub really is the repository of any service. It's service discovery for humans, as opposed to service discovery intended as DNS service discovery. Kong is also organizing, you know, your Kong Summit. Um, and the, the thing is that Kong is not new to these virtual summit in this, you know, change time. Uh, so tell me, first of all, uh, a bit about the summit itself and uh, what will be the focus and how people can register or participate in it. The Kong Summit this year, uh, this is our third annual Kong Summit. This year, the Kong Summit, um, it's going to be fully digital, as you can imagine. Um, and anybody can join from anywhere in the world, from any time zone in the world, and it's fully free. So the, there is free tickets. If, you, if anybody wants to go to, to kongHQ.com slash summit, they're going to be able to pull the agenda of speakers. We have speakers from industry speakers, customers, users. Uh, there is a, there is a lots of exciting speakers. There's Matt Klein from Amboy, for example, and team from OPA. So there's going to be lots of industry players at the summit um, talking, about, talking about how the industry is changing. And then we're going to be having customers and users talking about how Kong and, and how Kuma and how the service mesh products and the API gateway product are helping them building modern connectivity in their organizations. And it's happening uh, from October 7th to 9th. 
and um, and I suggest everybody to to check it check it out at congechq.com slash summit to attend the summit live. And then of course, if the time zone it's not uh, practical for some people, we're going to be recording all of the videos that are going to be um, that were uh, all, all the all the sessions at summit, and we're going to be presenting them online. So if you cannot attend, but I hope you can. Uh, if you cannot attend, then you will be able to 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 see those videos after the Kong Summit is is finished. Marco, thank you so much for taking your time out today and talk about uh, not only Kong Connect, but also the upcoming conference. I wish we could have attended that in person, but that's not going to happen. Let's hope for the next year. But once again, thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.